You know, back in 1996, I had a bad thing happen to me. Um, I was working for Governor Pete Wilson back then, and um, I was coming out of a parking lot. It was an enclosed parking lot, and I didn't have my lights on. Uh, and I had a few after the inauguration party. And I got pulled over, and I got convicted of uh, reckless driving. Um, and I'm, you know, not really proud about it, but I've always thought about in the back of my mind, is there something I can do to be able to get that, you know, conviction way back when, 1996, uh, off my record? And so I thought of this topic about expungement, which is basically wiping your, your criminal record clean, and I wanted to talk to one of the best experts in that. That is renowned criminal defense attorney Doug Ridley of Ridley Defense. Thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, appearing today. Uh, this is our second session, and I'm so happy that you took the time out because you're a super busy guy to come talk to us about expungement. No problem. No problem. You know? All right. So what I think I really want to focus on uh, now is your, your kind of background and your experience. Yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about your experience in the DA's office in the last video. But before we go on to uh, talking about expungement itself, let's talk about, you know, you know, the question that always comes up. All right. And I'm sorry to put it to you here. Yeah. Do but it. How do you defend guilty people? Uh, I love getting asked that question, and I love defending guilty people. <laughs> I love guilty people. Uh, guilty people yes. feel bad about what they did. Mm -hmm. Guilty people uh, are sorry that they got into trouble. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that actually I like working with. And you'd be surprised how many people out there in the community end up retaining me mm -hmm. for services, knowing that they're guilty, knowing that they did wrong, because they're looking for somebody to either shepherd them through the process because they don't understand criminal courts and it's scary, yeah. or they're looking for somebody to get them a better final outcome, final resolution on, on a case, okay. like getting yeah. a DUI yeah. reduced to a reckless driving. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's something that uh, it's sometimes hard to get done yeah. without somebody like me. So you really kind of view yourself as a person to, to make sure that fairness is administered. Is that, was that a correct Yeah, answer? absolutely. Okay. I mean, I'm not out there to find some slimy way of getting a bad guy off the hook. Yes. I mean, Technicality. The, the, I mean yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes that comes okay. up, but it comes up in the sense of uh, the police made a mistake in their procedure. Mm -hmm. There was something that was done that was not constitutional. Okay. And so therefore it affects what we're discussing about the case. Mm -hmm. um, I represented a guy on murder charges who w absolutely killed his friend, but he wasn't guilty of murder. He was mm. guilty of involuntary manslaughter, excuse me, voluntary manslaughter, okay. because it was a heat of passion moment. It was an argument yeah. where that ended up happening. Yeah. Uh, so I can make a huge difference for somebody like that. Instead of going away for life in prison, yeah. he ended up doing, he had to do time. He still killed somebody, but yeah. uh, he ended up doing significantly less okay. because I was on board. All right. Well, we can be thankful for people like yeah. you because you make sure that it's fair. And, you know, I've, I've been there, right? I, I had a conviction for wet and reckless back in 1996, and I had handcuffs on. Um, I was a younger kid and I was scared and I was so thankful, I, I wish I knew you back then, yeah. you probably weren't an attorney back then, but um, that, that I had a criminal defense attorney to help yeah. me out and make sure it was fair. I'll tell you, I, this is what I tell my daughters yeah. when they ask me about this. Uh, imagine if you were late to class and the principal wanted to ban you from the school forever and their eyes get big like this and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I say, that, that wouldn't be fair, we would agree that that's not fair, yeah. right? Yeah. Well. That's what I do all day, every day, is I come in and I say, you know what, let's not ban that person from the school. Yep. Let's make them pick up trash around the campus or something along those lines. And uh, Something uh, fair to, to fit, the, fit the crime. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Ridley Defense is really well known in this area uh, for being one of the top criminal defense firms around. Is that your life now? I mean, is it Ridley Defense, or do you, do you have any aspirations to go, you know, maybe be a judge or be in politics or anything like that? <laughs> you know, if you had asked me halfway through my DA's office career, yeah. I would have told you that I would never be a criminal defense attorney. Okay. And if you asked me today, I would tell you that I don't have any plans on being a judge. <laughs> uh, but I've learned enough over the years that I know that, you know, sometimes things change. I yeah. mean, that is a very respected, very honored position. Yes. And who knows? No. But for the foreseeable future. I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now. Our office is growing. We have uh, a, a full-time attorney that yeah. I work with now and looking to add another one on maybe later this year. And mm -hmm. so it's it's an exciting time for me in this mm -hmm. practice. And especially because I've been able to craft it and build it the way I wanted to yeah. with generally working with good people like you. Generally and, and me. Yeah. yeah, generally you. <laughs> generally you. A few <laughs> bad guys here and there. 
I mean, hey, you you know who you are, bad guy. Yeah, exactly. they're, yeah. they're watching. I know. I know, they're chatting. That's right. Um, so that's probably, that may be in the future, um, but I guess what I, w I wanted to know is, is there any thought that you would ever want to, to stop doing criminal defense work? Would you ever want to uh, uh, go in a different direction in your career, or you kind of just want to stay where you're at? No, now? I, I, I've really b become okay. comfortable with what I'm doing right now, and okay. and I don't see making any sort of changes in, in my career. Would you expand uh, your office? Yeah. Okay. That's in the works. Yeah. yeah. Now, if the viewers want to contact you, uh, do you take any type of crime, criminal defense? Or? Any type of criminal okay. case that's in state court. Okay. Um, I really, federal court has a different set of rules, and um, I'm not the best guy okay. in the entire world on, on federal so cases. So California state court? California state court cases. Okay. Um, and we've handled cases from San Diego all the way to up north. So even though a bulk of our cases are here around around the heart yeah. of Westlake. Oh, okay. You, you mix in the heart of the, the matter heart, every time. The heart. <laughs> okay. uh, but you know, we're, we're, we're working cases all over the place. All right. Well, yeah. thank you for talking about that. Yeah. Let's get to the subject of the video because I want to give the viewers some concrete steps about how they can follow the, or how they can follow these steps to be able to get an expungement in their record. Um, can you describe for us, first off, what is expungement? An expungement is an order that your case was dismissed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it okay. is. So it's the same dismissal that you would get if we had gone all the way to jury trial on your case and had fought it and yeah. gotten you a not guilty. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so it's that, or or we had convinced the DA's office to drop the charges completely. Drop so there the case. is a record of a charge. Absolutely. Oh, and see, and, and that's okay. that's that's the frustrating part. Okay. Um, there are very very few cases that you can ever completely make it disappear. Okay. If someone's doing a background check. Let's say that yeah. let's say that you and I work together on your case. Yeah. And if someone did a background check on you, they would see that in 1996 you had that conviction. Yeah. But then they would see that in 2018 the case was dismissed. They would see that. Okay. Yeah. Huh, interesting. So it doesn't make it completely go away, but there are a lot of benefits to not having a conviction on your record. True. Uh, okay. though I advise people all the time, you shouldn't ignore it. You shouldn't try to make it seem like it never happened. Yeah, yeah. Because if you were gonna hire a, a paralegal for your office and you would ask that question and they'd say, never been in trouble with the law ever, yeah. and then you see that, yep. That's going to make you think twice. Not labor law attorney, so can't speak on that matter at all. Yeah, well, but, but in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but if if for some reason they were able to find that out yeah. and they had thought that you'd been dishonest about it, mm -hmm. then that might affect their opinion about you. I yeah, advise clients to say, uh, well, yes, I've I've been convicted of something, but it's been dismissed. I see. Okay. And you don't even have to use the word expunged. Yes, but it's been dismissed really kind of handles it. That's really it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, does it take place or does it apply to any crime? I was thinking about your the, the client you had who actually murdered somebody. Yeah. If he gets out of jail sometime, can you erase voluntary manslaughter? No, those those real serious crimes like that, okay. you know, you, you would need a governor's pardon. You would need something on that level to, okay. to wipe something like that out. Okay. You know, really what, what I'm dealing with when I'm dealing with expungements are uh, misdemeanor crimes. So generally, okay. things that people aren't doing more than one year in jail for, yeah. uh, you know, in, in that category, lower level felony cases. Okay. Um, there are some cases that we we use the term wobble. They yeah, wobble wobblers, wobblers yeah, yeah, between yeah. a felony or a misdemeanor. Okay. Those are ones that actually we make a huge difference on okay. because as part of the expungement process, we'll also reduce that from a felony to a misdemeanor. Okay. So we've had clients who've been convicted of, uh, you know, felony grand theft, which is something that can be reduced down to a misdemeanor. Yeah. And so we go in, get it reduced to a misdemeanor. They no longer have a felony on their mm -hmm, record, mm -hmm. which has a lot of benefits yeah, for people. Definitely. And then go ahead and get it expunged yeah, yeah. You know, from there too. Uh, how much time must pass before you can get an expungement order? You have to be off probation. Okay. So wow, typically good. probation yeah. periods are a three year period three of time, year, yeah. maybe five years for some cases. Uh, also, it's a lot harder to get an expungement granted when there's been violations of probation. Okay. So we've had judges who have come back and said, um, right now we're not ready to do the expungement yet mm -hmm. because Ian violated mm -hmm. probation three times while he was on by mm -hmm. either not checking in with his probation officer or, or yeah. something along those lines. Now with a DUI, I, I, the usual mm -hmm. sentence is three years probation, right? Yes. Okay. So literally like the day after three years, you could apply for an expungement? Absolutely. Wow. And And mm -hmm. as long as the probation's done. Okay. We've had cases sometimes where we've actually been able to get people off probation early. S depending on the judge and depending on the culture in the courthouse, uh, sometimes we've been able to get people off probation at halfway through their probation mark. Wow. It's not happening right now because of 
the policies in courthouses change from time to time. I know that's a huge revelation for yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. but uh, right now they're not doing a whole lot of early terminations of probation. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah. Well, we have a question from the audience, and yeah. that is, is there a difference between expungement and having your record seal? I I'm not yes. exactly sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Tell me about it. Um, there are two classes of people that I work with who can have their record sealed. Okay. Juveniles okay. absolutely can have their record sealed. A juvenile who successfully completes probation, successfully gets done with their case, they can have their record sealed. Okay. And having their record sealed means that even the prosecutors can't find the records of wow, that case. I like that. Um, mm -hmm. When I worked in the DA's office, I tried to find records of a juvenile that I was uh, prosecuting as an adult now, and we could not get those police reports because it had been ordered sealed. Okay. Um, so, th so that's a big that's deal. That's one thing. That's one. Okay. The other category is someone you probably wouldn't think of, but there is a new program for veterans in a veterans court where if they successfully complete a program where they've had counseling and they've gone through and done everything they're supposed to do, veterans can get their record sealed. Okay. Um, that's interesting. It's a very, very yeah. narrow window and there are a lot of exceptions. So just two, two. That's it. All right. So unfortunately, huh. we could not get your record sealed. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, take the viewers through the process of an expungement. What do you have to do physically? Sure, it's a bunch of paperwork. Okay. Um, so if you're somebody who really knows how to do your own taxes and knows how to fill out <laughs> a bunch tax. of complicated legal forms, then arguably you could fill out the forms probably and you just have to know what boxes to check and, and do that. So with you really that. don't need an attorney? So, so or, oh. You don't have to have an attorney. Okay. Um, if you really care about getting it granted, it's always a good idea to have an attorney there. But um, sometimes what ends up happening is we end up having to go into court actually and argue. And that would be where uh, you probably would want an attorney on your side because we know the right things to argue. I see. Um, but a judge is looking to see if there's been a negative impact on your life okay. because of it. Uh, it, maybe you've got something coming up, maybe you've got a new license you're applying for, or something along those lines. Yeah. Those would be reasons. Uh, but they're looking to see whether you've done a good job on probation, whether you generally led an honest life mm -hmm. since the case was over. Yeah, yeah. So uh, someone who has multiple convictions since that, mm -hmm. I advise them to wait okay. and have a period of several years at least mm -hmm. where they're doing a good job. And so those are the fine points mm -hmm. that an attorney really can make a difference. So it really is beneficial to have an attorney. I mean, if you want it granted. Well, I have a vested interest in telling everyone listening that yes, you need, you need an, attorney an attorney for every single one of these things. Uh, it's just for some people who are really great at forms yeah. and they don't have any complications going on, technically it's well, possible. it reminds me of a divorce. I mean, technically you could yeah. fill out all the forms on a you divorce could. and you could go through yourself, you right? You could. But you're, you're gonna have some problems. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you've described that. Now, we talked a little bit about this already, but you know, if if, if the evidence of my reckless driving conviction can be seen, mm -hmm. why do you even get an expungement order? I mean, I mean you can, I, I'm not a juvenile, I'm not a military vet, veteran, yeah. so I can't get the record sealed, so why would I get an expungement order? Well, I, I think there's two categories of people. Okay. Um, one is people who just feel better with it. Okay. It's more just, I can close that chapter of my life and move on. I see, so it's just literally like closure. The, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, for some, for some right. people. Then there are there's another category of people that we work with who are applying for new licenses. Okay. Um, we work with a lot of doctors. We look we work oh. with a lot of nurses. Okay. Uh, more more nurses even than doctors. Um, we work with people who are contractors who are applying for new licenses. Uh, insurance professionals who are looking to get more uh, contracts in. Yeah. And that blemish on their record is stopping them from getting some new business or new contracts. You know, there's sometimes there's a requirement for for child care givers to have a clean criminal record. Yeah. Is that, is expungement a clean criminal record? It's oh. very, very subjective. Okay. Um, employers are not supposed to consider an expunged case when they're making employment decisions. Okay. But we gave that example earlier where it, you're not a robot. You yeah. you would know that they didn't disclose something, and you're not supposed to take any action about that. But it could end up affecting you in some way. I see. So, you also alluded to this a little bit in your comments. Um, I always thought about expungement in my context, which is just one crime back in 1996. But what happens? You can get expunged like multiple crimes. Absolutely. Right? And wow. and we've we've worked with clients okay. who had. Uh, 
a handful of bad times, okay. you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Okay. And we can go in and show that that was a troubled youth, you know, indiscretion sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can go in and get multiple cases expunged. Mm -hmm. We've had cases that have been expunged, but a judge didn't want to reduce their felony from a misdemeanor uh, or down to a misdemeanor. Uh, okay. So uh, there are a lot of different variables that come into play. It really does counsel uh, the use of an attorney for the expungement process. It's, yeah, because it's not all, just a rubber stamp. All, all of right? these, no, no, it's not just okay. a rubber stamp. Okay. Uh, because there can be things that can come into play that could stop a judge from approving it. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think maybe your answer is going to be call an attorney, but can you give the viewers like some concrete steps to how to get an expungement? Are, are they available across America or do you know? Well, in California, yeah. the, the forms are available okay. through the, uh, uh, judicial. the State of California yeah, yeah. Judicial Forms website. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if, if you know how to search and you know how to get every single one of those forms and follow some directions, you can do that. Okay. Some courts also have in their self-help center some steps on their local court website. So that could be an area where if you're not wanting to hire an attorney, you could go and do some real serious research and okay. figure that out. Um, but that would be, again, another reason why uh, it might be a good idea. We don't charge as much to do an expungement as we do a regular of case. Course. So sure, sure, sure. Um, it's, it's usually a good idea to have a professional on board. A lot of times I'm doing these videos and I'm talking about the five steps to doing something. It sounds like we came upon one subject where there's just one step, and that is call Doug. <laughs> I like yeah, that to know. be the only step yeah, in yeah. any case that involves criminal activity in the state of California. Uh, but uh, yeah. it, it is possible. Yeah. It is possible. There's just a whole lot of, you have to make sure that you're filling out all those forms correctly. And you probably wouldn't counsel someone to do their nope. their own tax return nope. uh, without nope. without a professional on I board. wouldn't counsel someone to get an insurance policy without speaking to, a, to an insurance <laughs> law attorney. Anyway, Doug, thank you so much for spending time with us. Of course, and thank explaining you. Explaining to us the concrete steps about getting an expungement, which is one, call Doug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're with Ridley Defense. Yes. All right. How can the viewers find you if they need to give you a call about a crime or just a question about criminal defense? Absolutely. General? We answer questions all the time. So at RidleyDefense.com, R-I-D-L-E-Y Defense.com, or you can call our office, which is 805-208-0710. We'll make sure that that's in the comments. Mm -hmm. And uh, happy to, to give people counsel whenever awesome. we can. And you're very social media savvy, so there's like Twitter handles and Instagram accounts and all sorts of stuff, uh, right? Sure. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're easy to find on, on social media and easy to find online. Right. Very, very easy to find. Well, thanks, Doug. Again, I really, really appreciate Thank your you. time here. Um, of course, you just learned about expungement on the heart of the matter. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And also, you got to subscribe to this channel. Every Wednesday, we're going to put out a new video at 1.30 about questions about the law that you want answered. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Doug. Thanks.